114 stab. He stabbed her 114 times? Do it. You scrawled on this video to do it. It's your boy, Daddy. Go by Drew All right, so we back with another big body banger. You feel me? Listen, today we have something unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? This video is about a 13 year old girl who lost her life to a supposedly monster. Now, I don't know who this monster is, what they did to her, but from the thumbnail, it looks pretty freaking crazy. So, we're gonna hop right into this video. Like I said, it's at this is a very unfortunate event, especially 13 years old. That's way too young to be dying, and especially just, like, not a natural way, but, like, somebody else, like, taking your life, you know what I'm saying? Especially, like, I don't even, I don't even know what's going on, but we finna watch the video right now, so let's just hop right into it. 13-year-old Tristan Bailey was found dead on May 9th. She was found in a wooded area near her neighborhood covered in stab wounds, and when Sheriff Robert Hardwick was Dang. interviewed, he mentioned... Stabbed, bro. Come on now. I'm gonna try not to pause it, but it, it, that's crazy. Like 13 year old with multiple stab wounds. Like that he didn't want to disclose the specific number of times she was stabbed. But according to another updated statement from the sheriff himself, he said, and I quote, It brings me no pleasure to be charging a 14 year old as an adult with first degree murder. It was clear to us after we looked at what happened that it was not only appropriate to charge the defendant as an adult, but it was really the only charge we could make. And per an article from abcnews.com, they say he offered new grisly details about her murder, noting that there were 114 what the stab. He stabbed her 114 times. What the? Stab wounds found on Bailey, citing the medical examiner report, and at least 49 of those wounds were to the hands, arms, and head that were defensive in nature. Quote, she was fighting for her life, Lariza said. To say it was horrific could arguably be made an understatement. And a lot of you may not know what a defensive wound is, but per Google, it says that defensive wounds are any type of injuries that result from an attempt or repeated attempts to defend against an assailant using such sharp edged weapons as knives or blunted instruments such as fists and clubs. Such wounds are usually deeply indented stab wounds, but can be either blunt or sharp in nature. Bro, I don't have time for ads today. Not, today, I don't have time for ads. I don't. I, who are you, loser? So while this presumed psychopath of a 14-year-old boy was trying to He's murder... He's 14? Bro, what be going on with these little kids, bro? What be going on with these little kids realistically, bro? Like, come on, bro. And Bailey, she was actually fighting for her life. You know, she must have been putting her hands up and trying to block her face and... I just can't imagine what she must have been going through at that point in time. That has to be the worst nightmare for any any girl of any age to be fighting for your life like that in a situation of which you don't know you're going to survive or not. Tristan Bailey was a cheerleader at Patriot Oaks Academy in St. John's, Florida. Multiple media outlets have posted pictures of her smiling with braces and blonde hair in cheerleader uniforms and fancy dresses. And in these photos, it showcases her to be a fairly happy looking girl. But once her death was announced, it brought her entire community to a standstill. She was reported missing on May 9th earlier on the same day that she was found. Someone with her description was found on surveillance video in a residential area with a sole suspect in the case around 1 o'clock that morning. And later, around 3 in the morning, the suspect was seen walking back carrying some clothes. And this suspect is a 14-year-old boy, often unnamed by multiple news sources since I suppose they're uncomfortable with disclosing the name of a minor? The, a minor? He's not a minor. This man is a cold-blooded freaking killer. Like, what the heck is this stupid idiot's name? However, there were other news sources that disclosed his name. And his name is Aiden Fucci. How I would be mad too if my name was freaking Aiden. Freaking loser. If anybody watching this, your name Aiden. I'm sorry, but at the same point. It's dinner time remember. with Panera. Like your parents and couldn't Aiden come with nothing else. Hint. Your parents couldn't come with nothing else but Aiden? Fantastic. I'm hungry. However, before Tristan was found and when he was still only considered a witness to her disappearance, Aiden posted a selfie of him in the back of a police car making a peace sign with the caption, and I quote, 
Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? I mean, honestly, at this point in time, although this kid is not convicted of anything because they're still investigating the story. What in the sick mother? Who is his parents? Because they need to go to freaking jail too. Sorry. I'm pretty sure that this guy did it as they were the only ones seen on camera together after midnight. And then he goes ahead and posts this kind of picture while sitting in the back of a police car. I guess being smug or trolling or taunting the victim and her family. I mean, if it turns out that he actually didn't kill her, he's still an asshole he's for trying to make a joke out of this thing. In any case, he's currently being held on one count of second degree murder by the Department of Juvenile Justice. And the evidence they've compiled against him is as follows. His image on the surveillance camera, along with the someone that fits Tristan's description, Another video of him walking back alone later that morning, along with, and I quote, several items of evidentiary value were found in the boy's room that have a presumptive positive test result for blood. Stop! Bruh, I can't, not these ads, bruh. Not these ads. Who are these people? Get the heck off my freaking screen. For exactly what these items are have not been disclosed to the public. But what's most shocking is that Aiden apparently made several admissions of guilt when being interviewed by the police. After he was arrested, there was a Zoom hearing to discuss his detention. The judge ruled that he is to be held in juvenile detention for at least 21 days. And during this hearing, Aiden didn't make a statement, nor did his attorney return message for comment. Also, Aiden's father was reported as showing little emotion towards this hearing. His mother, on the other hand, was crying her eyes out as he was read his right. Cause you raised a cold, you raised a cold-blooded freaking lunatic. You raised him. That's your fault. You should go to jail too. And obviously, when you're dealing with criminal cases like this that involve minors, it can be a very tricky and bumpy road to traverse since this whole case will determine how Aiden's future turns out. You know, a lot of people are just worried that charging someone with something so intense at such a young age could make it so that they could never repent and have an opportunity to live as a free adult. However, Sheriff Robert Hardwick- 114 times- he stepped- he didn't accidentally do this. He did not accidentally commit this crime. He did not accidentally do none of this. He were, he, a hundred and, dude, how, you know how long it takes me to do this 114 times? He did that with a knife to somebody else. Like, he does not deserve to have a normal free life. What are you not freaking understanding, bro? Who cares about none of that crap? Seem to have a harsher stance saying, and I quote, I can tell you that the man is a cold-blooded killer. And I hate to say man because he's just a child, but... He committed a man's crime. Yep, I know. This entire thing sounds crazy, especially for a couple of 13 and 14 year olds. On May 10th though, it was decided that he would be charged as an adult. And this charge was more specifically of premeditated first degree murder, which could also very well mean that he'll be spending at least 40 years in prison yeah. since he's about 14 years old and 40 plus 14, what is that, like 54? He'll only be 54 years old if he makes it another 40 years in life. I mean, that's kind of crazy to think about, but hey, that just goes to show you how much life ahead of him is going to go to waste if he's found guilty of this charge. He should be. You can be confident choosing I, farmers. I know he did it. No I'm not even there, and I know he freaking did it. And this is pissing me off. Get the heck off my screen. All these ads, bro. Do I have this many ads? I, do I? If I do, I'm sorry, but I'm not. I got to get paid. In any case, later on May 21st, Aiden's original attorney withdrew from this case, and the judge presiding over this case had allowed this change. And to be honest, his own attorney withdrawing from this case is a really bad sign that he actually might be guilty. He is. But I think it's very important to tell you guys that apparently it's not because the lawyer wanted to leave, but it's because Aiden's family couldn't afford the lawyer fees, and so they applied for indigency instead. And I know, a lot of you may not know what that word means. Hell, I didn't even know what that meant five minutes ago. But apparently, if a person, a family, or defendant is too poor to afford a lawyer themselves, they can have one provided to them by the state via Yeah, state indigence. lawyers suck though, so he for sure going to jail, I ain't gonna lie too. The, 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 <laughs> the state lawyer for <laughs> show up in some air black air forces and... A freaking button up that's buttoning in all the wrong places. I'm telling you right now, your son is going to jail. See, new word of the day, indigency. Indigency, suffering from extreme poverty, impoverished, archaic, deficient, totally lacking in something specified. So a homeless person would be indigent. 
so that basically meant that he qualified for a public defender. Unfortunately though, public defenders have a very bad reputation of being incredibly incompetent. And I'm not saying all of them are, but a lot of them, especially in the inner cities, are not so good. However, this investigation is still ongoing and the evidence is still being reviewed. And I know a lot of you probably wanted more info on this case, but you gotta understand that cases involving minors are very hard to get info from and we're at the beginning stages of this murder trial and murder trials often take a very long time because you got to make sure that every single piece of info that you're using to prosecute a suspect is accurate or you can risk losing the case and that goes for the defendants and their attorneys as well not to mention you got to get a jury that is unbiased usually people who don't live in the area or who haven't heard about the story and the judges themselves have to sift through all the info hear both sides and try to be as impartial as possible but whatever the case may After be impartiality 114 times is enough for me to be partial to the side of him sitting in the freaking jail for the rest of his life i really hope that whoever did this we're presuming that this kid did it are punished to the fullest degree of the law because they took the life of an innocent 13 year old girl and her life will never be coming back you know i can't imagine how her father and mother must be feeling especially her father like we all know fathers are typically more attached to their daughters because that's their you know their little girls even when they grow up they still view them as their their little babies it's just that father and daughter bond you know i don't know how i would be able to move on in life y'all know i'm having a daughter I'm telling you right now he's not even gonna go into jail that's all i'm saying losing my daughter in such a tragic way but i want to know your thoughts and opinions on this if any of you live in this area let me know because i would really love to know more information about this case i'll try to keep my ears open to see if any more info comes out about this and if there are any major updates i'll probably make a little short video explaining what they are in any case with that being said you guys already know who it is thank you for watching and man 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 like i freaking said there's not a single way if I was the father that he would be going to jail. And I'm not even going off him. I'm not. He has to suffer. He's going to be in my basement suffering. I'm never going to let him die. He's just going to suffer his entire life. And then also, never mind. I can't get into that. We on YouTube. We on YouTube. We on YouTube. Hold on. But man, that's the end of the video. Y'all know what y'all think in the comments down below. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Let me know what y'all would do and let me know what y'all would do in this situation. If y'all was the father of the kid and if y'all was the father of the victim. You know what I'm saying? What would you do? Because if that was my son, that's not my son no more. I don't know him. I'm not even going to show up on the Zoom meetings. I'm not. I don't know him. I'm not associated with that psychopath. I ain't raised that. You know what I'm saying? I, I raised a nice, wholesome young man. This demon is not mine. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, bro, if y'all enjoyed this video, y'all will for surely enjoy this video right here. This wife found out that her freaking husband has been clapping the babysitter the whole time. And the craziest part about it is that the babysitter is only 16 years old. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So watch this video right here. But I'm going to see y'all out.